Hello viewers, Super GT here. The Death Chicane is a corner which has featured many times on this channel, but today it's back with a vengeance. It is worse than ever. It wants to kill more of us in more intriguing ways. So me and my opponents would have to navigate this fearsome corner without meeting our demise. But that would be easier said than done. We're going to begin this journey in the qualifying. Now, this corner, the death chicane, the chicane of death, whatever you want to call it, has claimed many lives over the years. But today, I'm going to really try to survive. That is the key. Now, you might be wondering why it's so bad. Now, it's bad because it's a very fast, dynamic corner, as you can see here. And with the recent... Oh my god, as I almost lose it in qualifying... Now, with recent update 1.13, the physics of the game have changed, and that made the stability of curbs very questionable. Now, sometimes you can go through there just fine, like I did just there. How about this time, as we come flying through? Um, yeah, as you can see, we hit the curb with someone else's had a very major accident, so our first victim is uh, Mr. Lawrence321. And really, yeah, the difficulty here with this corner is... The far sweeping nature of it. So you're threading a needle for a very, very narrow section. And then add to that the curb, which on this occasion has flung me into the wall. You see the crowd there looking on as um, we meet our fate smashing into the barrier. Uh, not much I could do about that one other than drive a lot better. Now at the end of qualifying, as you can see, P12, not great. I was in a Genesis. I went for a different car compared to the Beetle, which you can mostly see here, which takes up the top three spaces on the grid. There's some other people using the WRX, but not many people using anything different. Let's begin this race, a 16 lap race around Dragon Trail Seaside. We're going to have to navigate the chicane 16 times, ideally without hitting the wall, without hitting another car, without dying of death. Uh, so through the first corner here, taking it rather nice and easy. Then I spotted a gap open up here, I went for it. I was mostly off the track, to be fair, I got the position, but I also got a half second penalty. Okay, fair enough. We're gonna have to continue here. This is gonna be a long race. It's going to be one of those wars of attrition. And in many ways, you have to play the long game. As we head over the hill here in 12th, and just look up ahead. The, uh, the Subaru is going to get bundled wide. And let me tell you guys, this, this race was full of carnage, full of death. More here, look, someone else spinning off on the left, on the right. So we, we started 12th, gained a few, went back. Now in 9th, gained a few positions. We are going to have to serve this half second penalty. And as we come down the hill, through the hairpin, we are coming up now to the fearsome section of the track. So here we go. The, uh, the Beetle WRX going side by side through here. Not really a place where you want to go side by side. They just tuck in single file. As we come through, not too bad. Timmy there just grazing the wall on the exit. But I'm sure he'll be happy to be going the correct direction. What was going on there? As I slow down for the penalty. Bit of contact with the other drivers. So I'm in 11th. Okay, not ideal. But I mean, we started 12. Could be worse. Could be worse. We could be dead. There's always that, there's always that. Uh, so let's just be thankful that we are actually still driving here at all. Uh, so down the hill here, next lap, lap number two, I'm in P10 here. I'm gonna try to go underneath this Subaru and it's, is it gonna work? Not quite, I'm on the outside and I, I just do not fancy going side by side with anyone into this area of the circuit. I'm gonna back out, yellow flag, what's going on? We have a collision, Timmy into the wall, there was a car facing the wrong way. All manner of depravity is broken loose. What is happening here? Let's have a look at the replay. It's really weird. It's like Timmy sort of hit an invisible wall. I don't know what he hit there, but um, some sort of voodoo magic has taken taken its form in this race. Either that or I don't, physics have just changed. Aliens are looking down upon us and affecting the race. I, I don't know, but something weird was, was up there. But perhaps you can explain in the comments exactly what happened to poor Timmy there. I'm not sure really what that was. 
Uh, so I find myself in 8th, make that ninth as the Aston Martin goes past. I didn't really want to fight too much. I felt like, okay, if you're going to go past, if you're quicker, I'm going to let you go. Let's not fight. And then hopefully we'll pick up a couple of positions when people inevitably crash. Next lap around, did anyone crash? Yes, there was one crash a bit further up. As you can see, guy in 7th losing some momentum. I'm not close enough to gain a position out of that. But it's only been three laps, and every lap so far, someone has had an incident. And there's definitely something big time wrong with the curves at the moment on this game, especially for this week's daily race as well. Going through their lap four, it was all okay, but this Spaniard was slow. So four laps in a row, four incidents. And um, the chicane of death, well, I mean, it's very aptly named. It's, it really is very relevant as... Um, we uh, we move on to lap five. Coming down the hill here, and I was, I was I was in a close little battle here with the Aston Martin. We were fairly evenly matched at this point in the race, and I felt like let's just follow him and try to move forward. And it seemed like we were doing that for the most part until his fate would eventually arrive on lap number five. So we come through here, and I can't really even explain that one again. Physics acting in a very, very extreme, weird way. Paranormal activity, perhaps. As you can see, I don't know what that was. The curb kind of had a very delayed effect on him. And then he span 180 into barrier. I say 180, about 90 degrees. He went 90 degrees into barrier. And that promoted me into 7th place. Now, I started 12th, and this card it just doesn't really quite have the pace. I don't really know why I chose it. Like it was something different. I wanted to try something different compared to what everyone else was using. So I felt like I was doing okay. I got through there that time, and then this car crashed. I found myself in sixth position. This guy with the green flag is doing a very, very good job waving that thing pretty much constantly. Um, I, I think he needs a promotion or at least a pay rise, perhaps. And this guy spun on the next lap. I almost spun in sympathy watching him spin. Um, and I find myself now in fifth. So the, the attrition in this one, there we go, fifth place out of 14. The attrition is very high. We started with 16. We're already down to 14 players, so two people have left. And I've gained seven positions, courtesy really, not of driving particularly quick, but just by not crashing. Another yellow flag, let's see what goes on here. This is where the race unravels, unfortunately. Whenever you see the yellow flag, you know something's coming up. You're never quite sure exactly what you're going to come up against. As I come through here, yes, unfortunately, the very last split second, I hit the car, got car damage, and my car is totally messed up. And yes, of course, um, we've got a five second penalty. Now, here's what happened, right? I come through, the car's ghosted. We, we go forward one frame, and then it's not ghosted. And then, boom, we're dead they're dead as well and everyone's dead uh, not great not ideal I took a bit of a risk by carrying more speed you know it does say yellow flag slow down I didn't really did I so I suppose I suppose that's just what happens when you don't slow down under yellow flag and you're going through the death chicane and there's smoke and you can't see what's happening so I took a risk it didn't pay off the race unraveled I was in fifth and uh, I missed the pit entry on that previous lap, having to serve our five second penalty, which is really rather painful, almost as painful as dying at the chicane itself. And uh, just shows you how one moment can completely kill your race. Actually, it was this lap where I missed the pit entry. I was meant to go in here, and then I realized, actually, no, you can't cross the pit entry line, otherwise you get another penalty. So I had to wait another lap, and we just slow down enough to get on the inside, not cross over the line, and then come in to change our tyres. And um, I was hopeful of maybe just getting slightly, you know, a few more positions, slightly further into the top 10. I was here in ninth, and it was quite a spread out race, actually. Uh, I'm already at this point here, 31 seconds off the lead. Not ideal. I think I probably lost more than 10 seconds with the, cr uh, the crash, the collision. And the five second penalty but um this was the only remaining bit of action and it was very weird this crash 
So I went up the inside here into the triple chicane. There wasn't any contact there, I don't think. But then this guy kind of just gave up. He just thought, right, yeah, that's it. I'm just going to spin out. And then he met his fate. And he added to the long list of casualties. The final time I made it through, I was in eighth position. And that was that, as you can see. I mean, I started 12th. I finished 8th in a car that wasn't anywhere near the best car. It wasn't too bad. I changed my livery and jumped in for a second attempt. And I felt like the first one was really rather frustrating because it was it pivoted on that one moment of going into that other car. Now this is my qualifying, right? I did a 35-1, a 35-1 again. And this is my fastest lap here. So I'll take you on a full lap of the circuit. In the first qualifying session, I did a 35-7. And now I'm on the 35 one, so I've got quicker. And I'm trying to maximise this car. I don't think it's as quick as the Beetle, uh, which appears to be the strongest car in Group 3 at the moment. Um, but all you can do is maximise your package, your car. Drive your car the quickest you can drive it. And then see where that puts you on the grid. And this car was actually really quite good through this section. The fast flowing sort of triple chicane here. I don't know what to call it but it's the fast triple sequence and this car actually handled really nicely through there uh, it was i think in the slower kind of corners where this car didn't really excel and it didn't quite have the top speed of some other cars um, but this was a good lap it was it was fairly hooked up and i knew it was a good lap because we come through this sector here we get this split sector notifications actually it's a one tenth down but i knew that if i just really went for it through the death chicane i'll be fine look at this this is the best i think i've ever taken it boom boom right up against the wall and i'm not sure how i pulled that one off but that is not easy to get that right and um i suppose in qualifying it's, it's your last lap in qualifying you've got to you know save the best till last and as we come up to the finish line it's going to be a one minute 34.8 or was it a point nine a point nine and that's going to put us eighth on the grid and that was good for me, I think, because it was eight tenths quicker than my previous qualifying. And we're in there in the middle of the pack. That's a lot better than at the back. I might be able to have a decent race from here. So let's see what we can do. The second attempt. Will the Grim Reaper come knocking once again on many occasions? Let's find out. As we hurtle towards turn number one on the anchors, and with multiple cars wide here, about four abreast, I think, at one point there. We're going to go side by side with the M&M's Beetle. And the exit, again, a decent run. And uh, the Aston Martin just, just getting in ahead there. And we're going to have the inside line for this right-hander on the brakes. And we're going to settle into single file. And we've claimed seventh, gaining one position. Okay, so that's a decent start. Always nice to move forward and not backwards. Let's settle, uh, settle into this race and try to bring it home. In the first race, I managed 16 laps without crashing on the death chicane. Can I do it again? If I can do it, actually, I know I did crash once. I crashed once, but can I do it this time without crashing? That would be ideal. As we head down the hill into the long braking zone, the Aston Martin actually braking quite early there, but we're going to try to hold station and see what occurs on the first lap round. Okay, so just waiting for that yellow flag. Is there going to be any incidents? I'm trying to spot your entry line. It's actually not too bad. The Aston Martin does graze the wall on the exit. And uh, we're going to come through into sixth place with the, the Beetle on our inside. Are they going to go for the move? They are, but we're going to hang it around the outside. Try to keep the position here. We are... Oh my goodness, the Subaru swinging left and right into the wall. And we're up into fifth. We've somehow found ourselves in fifth. Started eighth, now fifth. The Beetle's going for the move. Around the curve to the right. I'm going to defend the inside here. Aston Martin coming back at me. On the brakes. And the main objective here really is to not get swallowed up by this pack. We could very easily lose multiple positions here. As we take a look behind. Look how many cars there are. They are queuing up to overtake me. And I've got to do my best here to keep nice and cool. Stick to my braking points just try to edge away these guys are inevitably going to start fighting each other 
as they were side by side, as if they were going onto Noah's Ark. We're going to try and pull away and um, open up the gap. We do have a, a 1.7 gap to the car in front. It's going to be quite tricky to reel that in. I do need a bit of slipstream, I think, as uh, this it is one of those tracks where slipstream can help. So the beetle goes for the move, and I felt like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to go with you. Subaru there recovering from an accident. So I gain a position once again. Left chicane, lap number three, yellow flag, car facing backwards. And <laughs> we're going to gain the position. And yeah, this really needs to be fixed, I think. The, the curb physics in the game are extremely questionable. Um, for those of you who have done the Kyoto Daily Race this week, will know that you can basically hook your, curb, uh, your car up to the curb on the inside and it can pull you around like a train track. Uh, so the, 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 the curb physics are kind of all over the place and that is the main explanation as to why there are so many incidents around the circuit. Around a circuit, around a corner, which was already hard enough to get right. But this was like uh, the final straw really, I think, for a lot of people. As uh, this race and the previous race a high rate of attrition, lots of people quitting, kind of fed up with uh, crashing so often. Now, this was the end of lap eight. I'm going to go side by side with this Aston Martin here. There's going to be a slight bit of contact. I was, I was thinking he was going to back out. I think I might have just pinched him slightly up against the wall. But we both continue through there, luckily enough. And then I thought, right, let's bring it in. End of lap number eight, halfway into the race. Let's uh, swap out these soft tyres, get a fresh set. You could potentially try a no-stop, but going through the chicane on worn-out tyres is just so risky. It just really isn't worth that risk. Uh, the, the chances that you crash are just so high. And, uh, you know, it's possible to do a no-stop, maybe on mediums. Um, but I wouldn't personally want to take that risk. I find myself here in fourth. And this is, I think, a very good position given the pace of this car. I mean, this car shouldn't really be this high up. Um, but to kind of keep it clean, keep it tidy, avoid the incidents. I think we've done an okay job so far. But the Aston Martin here, I, I perhaps sh uh, should have defended. And he puts up the inside or that kink and then gets the overtake into this corner. And uh, he moved down to fifth. Um, but like before, I felt like, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to try to um, just try and hang about in the slipstream. And then perhaps we could wait for him to crash or try to go and overtake him back again. There's a six second gap to the car behind, so we've got a bit of, bit of a breathing room in terms of ha not having to defend really from anyone and kind of just like play it a bit safe from now until the end. Uh, you know, if I feel like I'm going to crash, I can just back out a little bit and afford to lose a little bit of time. I've got some time to play with. How about this lap? Can the Frenchman in the Aston Martin take the corner nice and clean? Yes, he can. He looks a little bit ropey. In fact, if anything, I took it a lot worse in the wall on the exit. We're going to whip this one forward to lap 16. There wasn't really much action, um, apart from these two guys here um, getting caught up in a battle for third. And I was just kind of a spectator here, really, at this point. I was quite close, but not really close enough to go for an overtake, hoping that maybe one of them would crash, but... You shouldn't wish such ill fortune upon your opponents. And it didn't happen. Although the Aston Martin did go for a move on the Beetle at the very last corner to claim the podium. And moments later, I would cross the finish line in fifth. So 16 laps completed there, bringing home a very average car to a top five without crashing on the very dangerous track. Now, something that was very, very interesting in the results sheet, there was some someone who actually deleted their account, perhaps in a rage. Now, by power of deduction, I worked out that it was this driver, and this is where it happened. So they came through, and it just didn't look like they did anything wrong. They just went over the curb, and it just completely uh, spun their car. Paranormal activity at work once again, moments later he uh, vanishes into thin air and that was that that was his Gran Turismo 7 career done now I did look for him on um, the recent players list and he was still there so I don't know I think that the fact that he's a, a deleted account may well have been some sort of network error 
but it was funny nonetheless. Take a look at this poor soul. He spun multiple times on the curbs, as you can see. Just graze your wheel on the side of the curb, and it does not help you at all. Went past someone there. And then he got a penalty here, crossing the entry line. And then <laughs> to rub salt into the wound moments later, on the same curb as before, gets latched on and spins, and then disappears and maybe dis um, <laughs> deletes his account. But there we go, guys. The chicane of death, featured many times on the channel, and has come back with a vengeance, killing many of our poor souls. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Do get yourself subscribed if you're new to the channel, and drop a like if you enjoyed. Have yourself an amazing day. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.